possibly it is only accessible at the at 5.30 in the morning, or it may only appear at the quarter moon, or when the seeker has an exceptionally full bladder. <laughs> Harry snorted into his plate of goulash. Percy frowned, but Harry could have sworn Dumbledore had given him a little wink. Meanwhile, Fleur de la Cure was criticizing the Hogwarts decorations to Roger Davies. This is nothing, she said dismissively, looking around at the sparkling walls of the Great Hall. At the Palace of Beaupartons, we have ice sculptures all around the dining chamber at Christmas. They do not melt, of course. They are like huge statues of diamond glittering around the place, and the food is simply superb. And we have choirs of wood nymphs who serenade us when we eat, and we have none of this ugly armor in the oils. And if a poltergeist ever entered into Beaubatons, he would be expelled like that. She slapped her hand onto the table impatiently. Roger Davies was watching her talk with a very dazed look on his face, and he kept missing his mouth with his fork. Harry had the impression that Davies was too busy staring at Fleur to take in a word she was saying. Absolutely right, he said quickly, slapping his own hand down on the table in imitation of Fleur. Like that, yeah. Ugh. Harry looked around the Great Hall. Hagrid was sitting at one of the other staff tables. He was back in his horrible Harry Brown suit and gazing up at the top table. Harry saw him give a little wave, and looking around, saw Madame Maxime return it, her opals glittering in the candlelight. Hermione was now teaching Crumb to say her name properly. He kept calling her Hermione. Hermione, she said slowly and clearly. Hermonini. Close enough, she said. I guess I could have tried to say that in a crumb voice, but we'll move on. Close enough, she said, catching Harry's eye and grinning. When all the food had been consumed, Dumbledore stood up and asked the students to do the same. Then, with a wave of his wand, all the tables zoomed back along the walls, leaving the floor clear, and then he conjured a raised platform into existence along the right wall. A set of drums, several guitars, a lute, a cello, and some bagpipes were set upon it. The Weird Sisters now trooped onto the stage to wildly enthusiastic applause. They were all extremely hairy and dressed in black robes that had been artfully ripped and torn. Sounds weird to me. They picked up their instruments, and Harry, who had been so interested in watching them that he had almost forgotten what was coming, suddenly realized that the lanterns on the other tables were gone out and that the other champions and their partners were standing up. Come on, Pavardi hissed. We're supposed to dance. Harry tripped over his dress robes as he stood up. The weird sisters struck a slow, mournful tune. Harry walked onto the brightly lit dance floor, carefully avoiding catching anyone's eye. He could see Seamus and Dean waving at him and sniggering. And next moment, Pavardi had seized his hands, placed one around her waist, and was holding the other tightly in hers. It wasn't as bad as it could have been, Harry thought, revolving slowly on the spot, Pavardi steering. He kept his eyes fixed over the heads of the watching people, and very soon, many of them, too, had come onto the dance floor so that the champions were no longer the center of attention. Neville and Ginny were dancing nearby. He could see Ginny wincing frequently as Neville 
would trod on her feet. And Dumbledore was waltzing with Madame Maxime. He was so dwarfed by her that the top of his pointed hat barely tickled her chin. However, she moved very gracefully for a woman so large. Mad-Eye Moody was doing an extremely ungainly two-step with Professor Sinistra, who was nervously avoiding his wooden leg. Nice socks. Oh, nice socks, Potter, Moody growled as he passed, his magical eye staring through Harry's robes. Oh, yeah, Dobby, the house elf, knitted them for me, said Harry, grinning. He is so creepy, Pavardi whispered as Moody clunked away. I don't think that eye should be allowed. Harry heard the final quavering note of the bagpipe with the with relief. The weird sisters stopped playing. Applause filled the hall once more, and Harry let go of Pavardi at once. Let's sit down, shall we? Oh, but this is a really good one, Pavardi said, as the weird sisters struck up a new song, which was much faster. No, I don't like it, Harry lied, and he led her away from the dance floor, past Fred and Angelina, who were dancing so exuberantly that people around them were backing away in fear of injury and over to the table where Ron and Padma were sitting. How's it going? Harry asked Ron, sitting down and opening a bottle of butterbeer. I'd like a bottle of beer on now. Ron didn't answer. He was glaring at Hermione and Crumb, who were dancing nearby. Padma was sitting with her arms and legs crossed, one foot jiggling in time to the music. Every now and then she threw a disgruntled look at Ron, who was completely ignoring her. Pavardi sat down on Harry's other side, crossed her arms and legs too, and within minutes was asked to dance by a boy from Bowbottoms. You don't mind, do you, Harry? Pavardi said. What? said Harry, who was now watching Cho and Cedric. Oh, never mind snapped Pavardi, and she went off with the boy from Bobotten's. When the song ended, she did not return. (laughs) Hermione came over and sat down in Pavardi's empty chair. She was a bit pink in the face from dancing. Hi, said Harry. Ron didn't say anything. Isn't it hot? Isn't it? said Hermione, fanning herself with her hand. Victor's just got... Victor's just gone to get some drinks. Ron gave her a withering look. Victor, he said, hasn't he asked you to call him Vicky yet? Hermione looked at him in surprise. What's up with you, she said. If you don't know, said Ron scathingly, I'm not going to tell you. Hermione stared at him and then at Harry, who shrugged. Ron, what? He's from Darmstrang, spat Ron. He's competing against Harry, against Hogwarts, and you're, you're... Ron was obviously casting around for words strong enough to describe Hermione's crime. Fraternizing with the enemy, that's what you're doing. Hermione's mouth fell open. Don't be stupid, she said after a moment. The enemy? Honestly. Who was the one who was all excited when they saw him arrive? Who was the one who wanted his autograph? Who's got a model of him up in their dormitory? Ron chose to ignore this. I suppose he asked you to come with him while you both are in the library. Yes, he did, said Hermione, the pink patches on her cheeks glowing more brightly. So what? What's happened? Trying to get him to join Spew, are you? No, I wasn't. If you really want to know, he... He said he'd been coming up to the library every day to try and talk to me, but he hadn't been able to pluck up the courage. Hermione said this very quickly and blushed so deeply that she was the same color as Pavardi's robes. Yeah, well, that's his story, said Ron nastily. And what's that supposed to mean? Obvious, isn't it? He's Karkaroff's student, isn't he? He knows you hang around with... 
he's just trying to get closer to Harry, get inside information on him, or get near enough to jinx him. Hermione looked as though Ron had slapped her. When she spoke, her voice quivered. For your information, he hasn't asked me one single thing about Harry. Not one! Ron changed tact at the speed of light. Then he's hoping you'll help him find out what his egg means. I suppose you haven't... You've been putting your heads together during those cozy little library sessions. I'd never help him work out that egg, said Hermione, looking outraged. Never! How could you say something like that? I want Harry to win the tournament. Harry knows that, don't you, Harry? You got a funny way of showing it sneered Ron. This whole tournament's supposed to be about getting to know foreign wizards and making friends with them, said Hermione. No, it isn't, shouted Ron. It's about winning! People were starting to stare at them. Ron, said Harry quietly, I haven't got a problem with Hermione coming with Crumb. But Ron ignored Harry, too. Why don't you go and find Vicky? He'll be wondering where you are, said Ron. Don't call him Vicky! Hermione jumped to her feet and stormed off across the dance floor, disappearing into the crowd. Ron watched her go with a mixture of anger and satisfaction on his face. Are you going to ask me to dance at all? Padma asked him. No, said Ron, still glaring after Hermione. Fine, snapped Padma, and she got up and went to join Pravardi at the bow buttons table, who conjured up one of his friends Oh, at the to join Pravardi and the Bowbottoms boy, who conjured up one of his friends to join them so fast that Harry could have sworn he had zoomed there by a summoning charm. Oh boy, that's 12 minutes long. Okay, I guess you got a couple of little bonus minutes there. So things aren't going so well at the Yule Ball, are they? 